this is the issue. You know, the NAFO people who are out there are always like, well, the Moscow has tried to assassinate Zelensky. Yeah, who's defending Moscow? Okay. Right. If the I can name at least two people. Kremlin drone incident. Zelensky denies Russian claim Ukraine attempted to kill Putin. Kiev denies involvement in alleged Kremlin drone attack. Hmm. Sounds interesting. It's a false flag. Literally only the roof of a building was burned. You think the Russians did it to themselves? Gotcha. By the way, Russia is the one country where you can just anytime anything happens to them, you can just say false flag and you're probably right and you don't need to elaborate. Remember how many false flags they were doing when they were trying to do uh, Kostis Belli for the, the, the invasion of Ukraine, right? That, that one where it was like, oh, look at this car bomb, bro. And it was just like a car sitting there and then they detonated it by like walking it over to behind a hill and blowing it up in the middle of the night with no one around. They, they did so many, so many things like this. The totally real NATO communicate. Oh yeah, the, the 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 leaked CIA Western English communications they found. Remember the NATO comms? They the the two two got one named like Sergey and one named Peter talking to each other in the thickest accent. Literally like Metro Last Light voice extras. Uh, you know, are are like Texans in Ukraine. Yeehaw! Howdy howdy! Uh, American big boy cowboy westerner Doug Dugginson. <laughs> you're you're in Kharkiv region. Oh my god. Don't watch Crystal and Saga's coverage. <gasps> Wait, wouldn't that be way funnier though? Good morning everybody, happy Thursday. We have an amazing Our boys! Show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed we do. Lots to get to this morning. On our territory, we are defending our villages and cities. We don't have, you know, enough weapon for this. That's why we don't use it any, anywhere. For, for us, that is the deficit. We, we can't spend it. And we didn't attack Putin. We leave it to tribunal. Just going to say, uh, I would say it begs belief just because, and we'll get into this in a little bit, about the way that they are specifically phrasing their denials. But I think it's also just worth, um, for anybody what? who's just joining us and hasn't seen the video, this is some crazy video in downtown Moscow. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. I mean, what we are watching here is this, you know, this is the heart of power inside of Russia. And you can see a drone very clearly coming and striking the flag, uh, which is on top of the domed building there. And actually, whenever there's some zoomed out photos um, and video of this crystal, you literally watch the drone fly past the Kremlin, the entire seat of power and all legitimacy of authority in Russia before exploding on top of the flag. The Russians claim that anti-aircraft was used um, to blow up other drones that were in the area. There's- It really does look to me more like it just blew up right on top of the Kremlin, like it got manually detonated. I don't see anything shooting it. I I know that it's very possible something could have shot it and I just wouldn't be able to see it from this angle, but it really just looks like it blew up, you know? I, it, it looks like, I, I just, I, you know, be, being very uncharitable here, you know, I, I just do not, it just, yeah, I don't know. Again, the circumstances around all of this are unclear. I want to go back to, though, the initial deni the denial now by the Ukrainian regime. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. And this was a screenshot that was flagged by our producer. Following the news, the actual chief of staff to President Zelensky actually posted three fire emojis on his Telegram channel <laughs> without any commentary, but then deleted the post shortly <laughs> afterwards. Them oh, shit. They, oh, they had the perfect operation. They were going to fly one drone a hundred miles into Russia and then pop it right on top of the Kremlin and it was all going according to plan were it, were it not for Andrew Yermak posting three fire emojis this is almost more of a tell deleting the post is a little bit of a tell uh, I would say and the other reason that I think it's so important to think about all of this is that if you read the detailed response, not just by Zelensky, but by the chief foreign policy advisor to Ukraine, who actually put out a tweet in English, he said something which calls into sus calls into question the entirety of the Calls statement. into what? He said, Crystal, we have never used drones or perpetrated any attack 
on Russian soil. Mm. That's why even pro-Russian or pro-Ukrainian accounts who I follow, people like Michael Weiss and others, are saying this is ridiculous. They're like the idea that the Ukrainian intelligence services have not carried out both assassination campaigns and even air like attacks on Russian soil yeah. is ludicrous. You know why it's ludicrous? We even know from the leaked set of Pentagon documents that they not only have done so, but want to do so with long range weapons. So there's a lot, if you parse the language, you know, Zelensky, funnily enough, is saying, oh, well, we don't have the weapons. First of all, you have the weapons. Second, you actually want more so you can do even more of this. And third, the idea that the Ukrainian intelligence services have not carried out multiple attacks on Russian soil throughout the course of this war is just a lie absolutely on its face. Even the most pro-Ukrainian accounts will tell you that. Now, does any of this mean that they are directly responsible? Well, the attacks that they've made on Russian soil the few times that have happened have been attacking like attacking like logistics supply lines fuel depots over the russian border not like flying a drone all the way to moscow to 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 do a little firework next to the flag you know who knows is it a genuine who knows moment is it technically possible the russians could have carried out a false flag um Maybe. I mean, let's think about it a little bit. But first, though, I think we should note that the people who are the most pro-Ukraine here in Washington all want to call it a first flag, because I think by saying that, they are- Is Sagar really implying the statements are being worded specifically to sound like a denial, but not actually be a denial? Surely lying is not- Well, this is always how conspiracy bait bullshit works, right? In this in this case, like, I, I, I think genuinely it is less conspiratorial to say that it was a false flag than to think it was actually an assassination attempt by the Ukrainian government. If we're talking about like realistic things to happen, if we're operating in reality and we consider what is like on the table, Russia does false flag, whiny bait, cry bully bullshit all the time. Whereas like, what wh wh what is this? Like an assassination? Like, come on, you know? Um, it could have also been some dissidents, right? Some like, um, some Russians who are trying to stick it to Putin. By, by flying a drone up there. You know, there's a million things it could be. Pretending this is some kind of, like, escalation from Ukraine is really dumb, though. Implicitly acknowledging this is a dangerous escalation. One of those is the former CIA oh, director. Oh, see, there. Yeah, right. Yeah, there. Leon Panetta, here's what he had to say. And former CIA director President, under President Obama, Leon Panetta. Secretary Panetta, um, sources tell CNN that U.S. officials had no warning that an attack like this was coming and that the Ukrainians assured them privately they had nothing to do with it. Uh, what's your take? Jake, uh... This this really does smell like a, a false flag operation. On this guy looks like the uh, the handler from The Incredibles. Does anyone else feel that way? You know what I'm talking about the guy who kept move kept moving. Bob and Parr, yeah. Part of the Russians, uh, a diversion, if you will. So uh, false flag. They said it's a diversion. I mean, again, look, anything is possible. But I think we should consider a couple of things. I'm curious what you think, Crystal. Yeah. Number one is this. Uh, it's humiliating to have a drone. It's like the Chinese balloon thing, for, but for the Russians. You have a nation that you are at war with that is able to penetrate your most innermost defenses and strike at the seat of power in Moscow. I mean, that's humiliating. That would be like if somebody, you know, blew up the statue on top of the Capitol building. That's yeah. insane. Hey, remember how uh, America experienced a national humiliation in the form of Pearl Harbor and then again at 9-11, and it didn't then lead to a rationalization of military conflict? That's the thing. National humiliations are literally the main thing that governments use to justify military action. Why would you like, oh, well, they, would, they wouldn't do that. That would be humiliating to the country. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that Sagar is literally a 9-11 truther. Why would you make that argument? What? They wouldn't allow bad things to happen uh, optically to their own national prestige. That's ridiculous. What? Inciting military aggression by fabricating national humiliation is a classic tactic for, uh, for authoritarian governments. They love that crap. Saying, right. think about the what that uh, response would look like and That's the questions it would call to the actual like command and control of the Russian regime. Yeah. Second, you know, okay, everyone's saying it's a false flag and all that, but we also, again, as I've laid out, Ukrainian intelligence services have long both wanted the weapons to carry out attacks like this, have you know justified this, and what do you mean weapons to carry out attacks like this? That was just a dinky little drone. What we're, we're ho we're hoping and praying for the next one hundred billion from the United States so they can afford like a Radio Shack $200. What are you talking about? Also are, you know, we're obviously gleeful as we initially showed you in that. So I just think much- Gleeful? Oh, because of the fire emojis. Ah, cracked the case wide open. The false flag discourse is centered around the fact that the truth, here's the basic truth. 
whatever you think, this is definitely ratcheting things up a notch. Well, and whatever. No, what? 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 No matter what you. Th what? How? What? What? Whether or not it was Ukraine, Ukraine is still escalating. How? What? Are, or are they are they implying that like Russia false flagging themselves would be an escalation? What? Complete nonsense. Yeah, it's complete nonsense. It's incoherent as always, you know. But it's it's fun to bounce off of, you know. You think it's yeah. definitely in the realm of possibility. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even the biggest Ukraine stands who want to believe Panetta that oh, that has all the hallmarks of Russian disinformation yes. and a false flag in the infamous words where they used right. to uh, dismiss the Hunter Biden laptop story. Even if you want to believe that, you have to acknowledge the Ukrainians have done some crazy crap. All but the Hunter Biden laptop story was full of bullshit. And a lot. What? Hey guys. Remember, remember when after the Hunter Biden laptop story thing started like circulating right before the presidential election, everyone was saying that he had like porn on the laptop and all like like politicians and mainstream pundits were saying this. And then all those claims died down eventually. And now they just focus on like connections to a business that Biden may or may not have had some kind of because it's like, oh, it turns out they just lied. Like all of that was made up. All of it was, you know. And then and then we had like the tactical intel drops from conservative intelligentsia where they're like, all right, the culture war is on. It's time to own the libs. Here are 12 more photos of Hunter Biden's fat while he's snorting cocaine off of prostitutes backs here. If, the, if this won't defeat the Biden dynasty, then nothing will. Here's more video evidence that Hunter Biden is hot girls with his fat while high on drugs. Yeah, like, like, like literally, though. That was, this was a thing. Why do they keep bringing up Hunter Biden? Um, because it's actually really difficult to get Joe Biden on, on anything, to be honest. Like, you know, not to say his political decision making has always been perfect. Not, obviously. But in terms of, like, scandals, Joe Biden's a fairly above board politician, you know? Compared to people like Donald Trump, certainly. He's like a f***ing angel when it comes to corruption or, like, previous scandals. So they go after his, uh, you know, his nebulous son. Yeah, he's relatively malarkey-free in that field. Already. And they've done it on Russian soil. And you also have to acknowledge, yeah, the Russians are liars. So are the Ukrainians. I mean, we know this. And oh, look, absolutely. he'd about... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very big brain. Thank you. Big brain analysis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Russia's lied about literally everything ever and every element of this war. But Zelensky did green screen himself into some, like, you know, outdoor footage that one time. It's true. Yeah. He to war. I get it. OK, maybe you can make some excuses for them, but you cannot rely on the word of Zelensky, whether or not uh, anyone in the Ukrainian state, Ukrainian Rotary Club or whatever mm -hmm. had to do with um, this attack. I think your point about, you know, it's hard to imagine that this would be the type of false flag that they would want to stage, given that also throughout this war, it's really been Putin's uh, Putin has really attempted to sort of protect the population yes. from the fallout of the war. He instituted a draft. He drafted in a war of aggression. What the fuck are you talking about? You stupid it. What are you fucking talking about? He instituted a, a draft. It was like the third time in Russia's history. Th there were there were people. There there was that guy who literally shot a recruiting officer. He's literally sending these like untrained conscripts into the meat grinder with insufficient. He 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 he's gotten. His entire country has been sent into poverty from sanctions and international condemnations that he brought on the country by invading Crimea. Like, what? nothing that he's done. She, I like how Crystal Ball pretends to be some kind of, like, leftist populist, and she's literally defending an oligarch, a multi-billionaire oligarch who has never done anything that wasn't multi-billionaire oligarch shit. Like, oh, yeah, bro, this, this like, former KGB, like, deep state for literally russian deep state spook is like yeah oh he he becomes a billionaire by acquiring a bunch of like kills a bunch of people who are enemies to him becomes leader for life by fucking over the democratic system and then consolidates more and more power into the kremlin oh yeah bro he's selflessly defending the russian people phenomenal and not make it feel like this is on their soil and this is coming for them directly in order to try to maintain support for the war effort. So, you know, it, it flies in the face of that as well. But just think about it. I mean, we had we know of two very, very likely that Ukrainians were involved in two separate um, assassinations on mm -hmm. Russian soil with uh, pro-Russian war uh, bloggers, effectively. We know that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, are we 
leaving aside the fact that I'm pretty sure those were done by like local insurgents and not Ukraine directly, I forget exactly. Are we pretending that it's an escalation to to kill leaders of the country that's invading you? Let, they invaded? that they, you know, were very likely involved in the Crimean Bridge. We still don't really know exactly what happened with Nord Stream. They may have been involved, it may have been U.S. on our own, etc. But it's not crazy to think that they were involved in... Escalation? The Crimean Bridge? Okay, so we're, we're just going to pretend, like, literally, like, Russia can invade Ukraine, but if Ukraine fires so much as one rocket across the border, then that's them escalating. Right, right, right. Going that up as well. We know from the leaked documents that they were very interested in uh, obtaining long-range missiles from us so that they could strike further onto Russian soil. So to act like, oh, there's no way this could be them, I think that that is incredibly, incredibly naive. I think it... No, it it could be in the sense that they have the operational abilities to get a drone to the Kremlin. I'm not doubting that. It's probably not because it would be stupid. The attack on the Crimean Bridge was like a logistical target. Why would they fly a dollar store drone over the, the, the Kremlin so it could pop and do nothing? Like That just doesn't make any sense. It seems like the same kind of pithy nothing Russia would do to then justify its, like, aggrieved sense of entitlement to invasion. This is willfully blind, and it frankly irritates me that they're, that the media is not more clear about these things because you have so much of the population that they just see Zelensky as a hero and they just dismiss it out of yeah. hand. Of There's no way possible that he could have done this. Think about the incentive that they have here, too, which is something that we have always flagged as a real danger. It is in the Ukrainians' interest to have an escalation that would draw us directly into the conflict. What? Ukraine sent a drone to pop over the Kremlin to bait the United States to invade Russia. Yes. I'm sold. So when we look at something like this and we're like, this is insane. You're trying to potentially assassinate the leader of a nuclear armed superpower. Like what in the world are you up to? But their calculus is very different. Their interests are not in this way actually aligned with us. They would like to see some sort of escalation that forces our hand and draws us directly into this war, because frankly, that is the only way that they would outright win. So that see, uh, man, I, I can't uh, dude. <laughs> I know people equate her and Kyle, but like, holy shit. I like, I disagree with a lot of Kyle's takes. Kyle's like a humanist down to the core, okay? I know he cares about the Ukrainian people. I disagree with a lot of his takes, but I genuinely do think that whatever we disagree on is born of actual differences in opinion about the same world it has that we always been there. Oh, sorry. And not like simmering hatred for the Ukrainian people. But whole, she's lit, like it's literally just fascism. Like, uh, like with no... Like, Jesus Christ, it's insane. Like, truly brainless shit. No, it's, it's yeah, completely brain dead, yeah. The, the, the drone that popped over the Kremlin is actually because Ukraine wants to initiate World War III with America invading Russia, so, because that's the only way it can win. Keep in mind that she's incredibly insistent. You'll notice, by the way, that the kind of people who um who who do this like fake uh anti-war like isolationist bullshit where they talk about how like we, we we shouldn't get involved with Russia and Ukraine notice how they will always undersell Ukraine's ability to win every time with no exceptions and that's because they're just pro-russian shills because they're fascists and Russia is fascist that's it you never hear somebody going hey i don't think we should be getting involved in Ukraine and Russia and i think Ukraine can win this on their own have you ever heard that because i haven't it's always Ukraine has to accept its losses. However, the greedy, the greedy and duplicitous Zelensky actually wants to begin World War III and end the world. Uh, so he wants to actually like get America involved, uh, you know, so that we can have two nuclear powers fighting. That's what they're doing, by the way. I'm not going to pretend this isn't rooted in the exact same like anti, uh, you know, like JQ global degeneracy shit. The idea that Zelensky wants to end the world by baiting American involvement is psychotic. I do think a lot of the hatred towards Zelensky has to do with him being Jewish. Yeah, of course. We're dealing with the creep of global fascism. Russia is literally like the epicenter of the global fascist movement today. 
Russia has financial and political connections to far-right parties all over the world. And basically every fascist party and every fascist group in the world supports Russia, with the sole exception of Ukrainian fascists who, for nationalist reasons, reasons hate Russia. And that's like the only group. Like, talk to Nazis or white supremacists or far-right people anywhere in the world, and you'll see support for Russia, except specifically in Ukraine, because those ones keep getting attacked by Russia. But that's it. So yeah, they always support them. You know, and we have to hear nonsense like this. There were pro-Russian parties in Ukraine till they were banned. Good. I, I Listen, I personally think it's okay to put laws against open support of the country that's currently invading you. I think that's okay, personally. I think that's reasonable. I really can't blame people for doing that. Well, the far right in Poland and the Baltics are also pro-Ukraine. Okay, because those are also former Soviet countries that only recently were, um, were freed from Soviet occupation. But I just really want to urge people to think about how much fire we are playing with here. Because even if you submit there was like a 1% chance that this was the Ukrainians, you have to, these are our partners and allies. They did not warn us pr probably in advance that they were going to do this. We have no control over them. And we also know from the leaked documents and from a lot of other reporting. We Listen, we can't prove that it was Ukraine. Maybe it's only a 1% chance. However, let's proceed with the assumption that it was Ukraine. How dare they do this? Do you, do you guys remember when they did the thing on, on the UFOs? Where like, now Crystal's like, well, you can't prove it wasn't Ukraine, you know? We have less insight in some ways into what the Ukrainians are up to because we don't have these deep intelligence networks that we've been working on for decades. With I thought Ukraine was a U.S. puppet. This was a proxy war. Oh, that's a good point. How does this gel with the narrative that Ukraine is just like a puppet on the strings of the American military industrial complex? How does that work exactly? Like, so, so like, what, how, okay, so they're trying to bait our involvement. Well, they're not going to succeed, right? Because we're the ones in charge? Or do they suddenly have autonomy now? Which one is it? You can't simultaneously say that America controls Ukraine and is using them as a way to bolster our, like, uh, you know, war factories, uh, but then also say we're going to get, like, inadvertently dragged in via Ukraine's actions when the actions are between Russia and Ukraine. Also, can somebody explain to me why the military-industrial complex would want World War III? That sounds like a great idea for the four seconds before the thermonuclear weapons hit every major city in the United States. You know, are we, are we like... Are we pretending the military industrial complex can't make enough money just selling its stuff to the United States government like on their own? We're building new Abrams tanks right now, not in response to any existing conflict, but because the U.S. government is continuing to pump hundreds of billions into our uh, war economy or uh, our military industrial complex, whether or not there's a war economy to sustain it. Our, our, our military budget is higher than ever. We don't need a war to keep enriching Lockheed Martin and Boeing. Why are we pretending that we need that? We don't. <laughs> That's a totally superfluous element. The only thing war does is potentially threaten profits by disrupting the supply lines that allow for the cheap production of the arms that we buy. I don't think people understand. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, they're just companies. Companies rely on stability for regular quarterly earnings. They don't want war. They just want countries to buy their weapons. War is an unfortunate byproduct of these countries happen having weapons. They don't want the war. They don't care about the war itself. They just want to sell the weapons. World war would disrupt the supply lines that even allow them to do this. Also, not to mention, historically, the last time the United States was involved in a world war, ignoring the nuclear apocalypse part, do you know what we tend to do to industries during world wars? we nationalize them or uh, subject them to ex excessive regulation. Because when we're in a full war economy, all of a sudden the corporation profit motive is far less important than survival. So we just do what we want with them. Like, why would they want that? Why would they want any of this? They just want to sell guns. It would, it would, it would be like saying that Sig Sauer or, or, or Smith & Wesson or Colt or, or Glock or whatever else, that they want... Americans to shoot each other more. No, they don't. The, the most reliable consumers of firearms in the United States aren't like gang members shooting each other. The most reliable consumers are lunatic preppers in the middle of the Arizona desert who own 57 firearms and use $400 of ammunition a day practicing in their underground bunker. You don't need to kill people to sell guns or ammo. 
You just need to sell people on the importance of guns and ammo. You understand what I'm talking about? I know I'm rambling about this for a while, but I want to thoroughly debunk the idea that, like, w like Western military companies want world war. I'm sure they'd be fine with, like, in Iraq or Afghanistan because that doesn't threaten global supply lines. But a war with Russia certainly would. So, yeah, it's just stupid. No thought has been put into this. With regard to the Ukrainians, and they don't let us in on what they're up to, we have less insight into their operations in some ways than the Russians. Yeah. I thought they were our puppets. Why are they now suddenly acting with autonomy and deceiving us? So we are playing with fire. This is an insane situation. And it just reminds me again, whatever we can do to get this conflict to an end is incredibly critical. This is the issue. You know, the NAFO people who are out there are always like, well, the Moscow has tried to assassinate Zelensky. Yeah, who's defending Moscow? Okay. Right. If the I can name at least two people. Ukraine, listen, here's my, here's my general take on the matter. People dismiss any concern of ours as some sort of condemnation on Ukraine. Now, here's the deal. If Ukraine wants to put itself in a position to risk its annihilation, they are free to do that. But then it should said risk. The position to risk its annihilation in this case was existing near Russia. That was the condition Ukraine fulfilled. I like how even here he's doing the victim blaming language where it's like, mm, well, if Ukraine wants a war with Russia. No, they don't. They didn't invade Russia. They didn't start this risk happen, they should bear 100% of the risk and of the possibility without any of the escalation coming back on us. And that's part of why I'm so annoyed by the discourse around this. Nobody's saying that Ukraine is quote unquote not justified or doesn't have the right to retaliate. You can do whatever you want, but whatever you want. You, you were just saying they don't have a right to retaliate. You were, okay. You should keep us out of it. And that's the problem. Which we're is not in it. We're not in it that they don't seem to understand we are tied at the hip i'm not my my choice i can tell you that but by the How? choice though of the president of the united states of nato and the entire western alliance no we're not no we just sold them weapons that doesn't we we sell everyone weapons what do you mean we're not tied that what, what does that mean this, this is Sagar under the impression that we have signed a mutual defensive treaty with ukraine like we're taiwan or something what we're, we're not tied at the hip we, we just sold them guns. We sell everyone guns. We're America. We have more guns than anyone. We love guns. That's not... Seems to have lost their minds. And they seem to think that, you know, we are going to rise and, you know, fall with whatever happens to Ukraine. And if that's the case, then, then of course, as you said, Ukraine is of uh, their fate and what happens to them is now directly tied to us. And so we should have some say in the matter. When you're dealing... The fate of Ukraine being directly tied to us was always the case. Uh... Major nations invading, conquering each other, changing the borders of Europe, that was always going to affect us. There was no world where this doesn't affect us at all. Of course not, that's ridiculous. But that doesn't mean we're militarily involved. We're not committing soldiers. ...with nukes, the f yeah. what's going on here is tied to everyone on the planet. Right. I mean, even if we weren't so directly involved and basically a proxy, you know, fighters alongside of the Ukrainians, with, by the way... Proxy fighters alongside the, they just like they'll say anything, like literally anything, shamelessly. Proxy fi okay, saying proxy war is one thing, it's wrong, but it's one thing because you can abstract it in like the oh, it's a proxy war because we're arming them, but now it's proxy fighters, like we're like we we like we the actual people. What do you mean? <laughs> what does that mean? It's insane, like completely insane. Do, 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 does she mean the foreign legionnaires, like the civilians who volunteer to join? Because that happens in every conflict ever. Always. There are probably Americans fighting in Sudan right now for like the government, you know, like that, that just happens everywhere. Way some limited number of boots on the ground and providing a lot of intelligence to help them with their targeting and all of those things, and of course, the money and the weapons and all that we have sent over there. Even if that wasn't the case, every single person on the planet should be concerned about what's going on here. Sure. And then also, this is another important thing. And by the way, this is coming from Bellingcat, you know, which is definitely one of the more of a pro Ukrainian group, uh, I think it'd be fair to say. Put this up there on the screen. They are acknowledging that there are apparent Russian att uh, Ukrainian attacks within Russia and R Russian controlled territory Thanks. over the last four days, all using drones. There was a drone attack on a huge fuel storage facility in Crimea. There was a drone attack on an oil depot near the Kerch Bridge. Wait, this one lists drone attack on the Kremlin. Why would Bellingcat claim that's a thing? Do they know something we don't? Who's this Eric Toller person? Author at Bellingcat. Apparent Ukrainian attacks within Russian, Russian-controlled territory. So by apparent, they, they, they're just going off of, like, vibes here? It, 
it, Bellingcat generally vets its reporting pretty well. I think this is actually pretty irresponsible. Unless there's some info which suggests it was by Ukraine, going by apparent Ukrainian attacks, you know, I, I like I, that, that association suggests that there's some kind of evidence they're basing it on outside of, you know, it just having happened. Where's the original tweet for that? I mean, if they have evidence, right? Like, serious question, was the Kremlin attack a false flag op? It'd be pretty bizarre if it was. It makes Russia look insanely weak and inept. This person's a liberal. You can tell because they work at Bellingcat. Fascist governments love having stories to cry about where their ineptitude is met with a resurgence of military might. They love that shit. Every, uh, every great humiliation is followed by a great victory. The humiliation provides fuel. Uh, that's, that's like, that's the cycle. This is why people say that fascists claim the enemy is at all times strong and weak. This is what they did with the Jews in Nazi Germany, where they would like, oh yeah, the fatherland is strong, the fatherland is invulnerable, the fatherland is eternal, the fatherland is ultimate, and then it would be like, oh no, one Jewish guy flexed too hard at the gym and like, uh, um, crippled the block or something. I don't some stupid what one a Jewish guy bought one bagel with a schmear and collapsed the economy of of of, of Berlin or something uh it, it, it there's this cycle of like great strength and great humiliation that that propels the fascist logic I mean look at Republican messaging at the same time it's like the the average voter agrees with us like um you know America's sick of this degeneracy blah 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 and then it's also like one trans person appeared in public this is the nation the nation is falling you know you understand they do this all the time there was a two major train derailments in a region inside of this territory and there also now is the drone attack at the kremlin lots of people kept saying oh well this is an isolated incident no it was part of a concerted ukrainian drone campaign <laughs> against targets inside of russia now once again they can do what uh, hey we don't know for sure this was ukraine this was part of a concerted uh, ukrainian drone campaign uh, we, we know that now. They would like, but if they get retaliated against and they get a city wiped out or something like that, well, then that's on them because that's what war looks like. And See, victim blaming, victim blaming, victim blaming. This is, okay, what, what he's doing right now is Russia's fascist logic. He's literally doing it right now. Oh, this one little thing happened? This national humiliation happened for, for Russia? Well, I guess they're just going to wipe out a city next, and you deserved it. You asked for it. Look what you made them do. Uh, he's literally doing Like, this is word for word what, like, a Nazi propaganda minister would be doing day by day to continue to fuel, like, the, the war uh, fervor during World War II. Like, it's, it's, it's flawless. It's textbook. It's obscene. Also, the idea that, like, Russia will now start leveling cities this was posted by horse May, um today bakhmut i'm going to cut the music because it's cliche what is this from or is this from a video game or is there a real clip somebody gave me a real clip i think oh wait oh my god it's not from a video game Video from Bakhmut, presumably after bombardment by Russian incendiary munitions. Nope, sorry. It was, I was looking at thinking, this is too ridiculous to think that it's an actual thing. But no, it's just drone footage. <laughs> sorry, Ukraine, you deserve this. Somebody farted near the Kremlin. And, um, and now this happens. Sorry, guys. Sorry, somebody flew a Radio Shack drone near the Kremlin. This is what the city looks like now. Yeah, like I said, Bakhmut now refers to, like, a location more so than a city, I feel. But this is exactly like that time that Ukraine struck within Russia's borders by surgically attacking specific military and logistic uh, targets. That's definitely the same as Russia just indiscriminately carpet bombing uh, and, 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 like, artillery uh, annihilating whole cities. How do you even fight in that? Are they making the tunnel through the rubble or something? You you don't. That's the thing. Um, you you well, that's I mean, that's that's the whole thing. Like you can't really fight. If a city is being shelled by artillery that hard, you basically like you can you can hunker down in basements and wait for the shelling to stop, or you just don't enter the city. 
Um, the fact that Russia would shell it that hard, apparently just like today or like a couple hours ago, suggests to me that they're almost giving up in the city. Think about it. Wagner's pulling out. They do this massive incendiary um, uh, artillery campaign. Kind of seems like the thing that you do like as a fuck you on your way out. Or at the very least, like when you're losing hope and being able to hold the territory. It is literally a part of Russian military doctrine to drop, I believe, tactical nuclear weapons on territories you're retreating from. They've never done that, but they literally, like, in the text of their doctrine, the stuff their generals, like, read and practice, is be a spiteful bitch. And they always have been. That's why they commit war crimes on their way out of basically every village they've been pushed out of. I thought um, Russia wanted to save Ukraine from Nazis. True, yeah. Do you see any Nazis here? All right, let's wrap up with these dipshits. We got a lot to do today. And then the idea that Wait, we here's the Ukrainians moving around in Bakhmut during the shelling. What? Brigadier General Viktor Krenko's trip in Bakhmut. Yeah, you stay in basements. Oh, for those of you who don't know, one of the reasons why they probably dropped incendiary munitions was to flush out people uh, in the basements. The reason incendiary munitions are so dangerous, well, I mean, they catch stuff on fire, but if you can create a firestorm in a city, you suck the oxygen out of uh, underground areas. You know, the, the smoke rises, but it pulls oxygen up, and, um, and, and people in the basement areas suffocate to death. Or they can go outside and burn to death. Um, it's, 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 a it's, it's a good way of clearing, unless, unless there's, like, infrastructure to really, um, like, filter air into, like, like, you need a bunker, basically, but in just, like, regular basements. Fire causing weapons or war crimes, right? No, I'm pretty sure that most incendiary munitions are, um, above board, though it depends. We talked about those vacuum missiles that Russia has, the, uh, I forget what they're called, the ones that, 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 that explode your internal organs. Uh, with, with the sonic boom. A white phosphorus is illegal, that's right, yeah. A thermobaric, that's right, the thermobaric ones. White phosphorus, uh, is, is illegal. Uh, I'm pretty, well, not illegal, I, I'm pretty sure it's considered, um, it's, it's considered some kind of war crime, I think. Um, could be wrong on that, though. I'm blanking a little bit. It depends on how you use it. Okay, it's still used in smoke. Yeah, I mean, for direct use. Yeah, like, like, just, like, shelling a city with it, yeah. It's in poor taste. Move on. Well, I just, I think it's important to see stuff like this because I want it to be illustrated that while um, worms like these two are lying to, like, protect the Russian government because they want to support fascist interests, that there are actual people liver living and dying and suffering over here. You know, like, it, I think it's very important to contextualize the conversation that we're having uh, on this war, you know, like, it, like you, 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 if you can imagine, like, the mental state of these guys who are, like, moving around, uh, you, you know, Mariupol or, or Kharkiv or, 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 or Bakhmut or whatever, whatever else. And then, like, you know, well, over here in America, we have these dipshits. Well, I guess they much have lived if we got the uh, video footage. Should get drawn into it even more, which is what a lot of people here in Washington want, I think is uh, very uh, problematic. Yes. I just, you know, for me, the fact that so many people want to call it a false flag is the tell in and of itself. Because they have, because by doing that, they can push responsibility off the Ukrainians. Because if we all acknowledge that is, look, let's just say. Wouldn't calling it a false flag lessen the heightened tension? 
if your big concern is America getting drawn into the war, calling it a false flag lowers the level of aggression indicated. If everyone just treated it as a false flag, that would lead to the lowest level of perceived aggression. Isn't it interesting? Like, he claims that he wants to prevent escalation of the conflict, but he's pushing the narrative that would justify the maximum level of aggression from Russia? Hmm. Hmm. Say is probably almost certainly um, it was the Ukrainian regime. Well, then they have to acknowledge them that they've done something incredibly risky. I also want you to think about, yeah. you know, with Panetta there on with, right. with Jake Tapper. Now, if you ever had anyone with a critical view <laughs> as we do or a skeptical view as we do go on and say, you know, this really looks like a Ukrainian attack. Oh, they'd be up at arms. Oh, they'd be There's no out. way yeah. you could just say that. I wish I could debate either of these dumb. I am. Oh, my God. Or both at the same time. There's no way Soiger or Crystal could hold up against me. There's no shot. I'll arm wrestle them both. I, I, it's so, they're so stupid. I can't, I still can't believe that UFO episode, man. Where they were both confidently like, well, they can't prove it's not aliens. I can't. Without Tapper jumping in and press, yes. which you know what? He should, right? Sure. But you got to do it on the other side too. Mm -hmm. And Panetta's just allowed to float this with no backing, no evidence, no nothing, just because he wants it to be true. And no pushback from the media, this becomes the accepted narrative. Also, to uh, linger on that uh, tweet that we put up earlier showing the various drone attacks um, in and around Russia from Ukrainians, that also really undermines Zelensky's claim that, oh, we, we don't even have the weapons to That's do That's what this. I'm saying, yeah. So if your statement of denial really doesn't hold up to scrutiny, that should cause people to have a lot of question marks about what else you're presenting here and whether it is, in fact, accurate or not. Again, let me just say, if you are more inclined than we are to believe Zelensky's denials and believe this was a potential false flag, please acknowledge there is at least a chance. Oh, my fucking God. That this was the Ukrainians. And if there's even a chance that they are freelancing and engaging in this type of incredibly reckless actions, that should change your whole way that you're thinking about this war. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, guys, ready or not? Incoherent. All right, moving on. We have to minimize our exposure to these dumb f***s. They truly are, like, impressively bad. All right, end it, end it, end it. Let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out. Let me out, let me out, let me out. 